Welcome to the self-instruction guide for using pivot tables to interpret PPI data. For the purposes of this guide, we are going to create pivot tables to report on PPI data from a microfinance institution in Indonesia. We will examine the data and build tables and charts to summarize and display the data by poverty line, number of clients, branch, loan amount, and loan cycle. If you'd like to follow along with this guide on your computer, take a moment to open the companion Excel file titled samplepipidata.xlsx. It can be found on our website at www.progressoutofpoverty.org. Once you have the sample PPI data file open in Excel, select the sheet that is named All. This sheet has all the data you'll be using to create your pivot table. Click the Insert tab and look for the pivot table icon. Click the pivot table icon to launch the pivot table functionality and a pop-up appears. In the Create Pivot Table pop-up, click Select a Table or Range button. Click the OK button and a new worksheet will appear. This worksheet is where your pivot table is, allowing you to summarize your PPI data in different ways. Also, notice that a pivot table box is shown on the left, and the pivot table field list is shown on the right. Rename the new worksheet as necessary to indicate that this is the pivot table worksheet. You are now ready to identify the different fields to be analyzed. One quick thing to note. There will be times that the pivot table field box will disappear from your screen. This happens when you remove the computer pointer from the pivot table box. To show the pivot table field box again, just click anywhere on the pivot table and the field list will return. Choose the data or fields that you want. For the purposes of this self-instruction guide, click the following fields from the pivot table field list to add to the report. Number, which is the unique identifier for each record that corresponds to the client ID number. Below food line. Below USAID extreme line. Below national poverty line. Below $1.25 per day line. Below $1.75 per day line. And below $2.50 per day line. Note that the field appears on the lower boxes either as row labels or column labels. As you see here, row labels display your fields in the row, and column labels display your fields in the column. Study the report. Note that the values of the column label appear on the Sum Values box. Also, note that the fields you have chosen now appear on the worksheet. In this example, and in your worksheet, the Sum values are all set to display Sum. However, we would like to know Average, not Sum. The next steps will walk you through how to make that formatting change. To change the way the value for the field is displayed via formatting, click the Sum Values field you want to change. A pop-up appears indicating the functions that can be performed, like Move Down, Move to End, etc. Click the Below Food Line field to change it. Note the function Value Field Settings. Value Field Settings change how your data is displayed in the pivot table. Click Value Field Settings and a pop-up appears. In the pop-up, you can choose from a number of mathematical operations to summarize the data from the Below Food Line field. Choose Average to summarize the value of the data in the National Food Line field. Click OK. Note that the result of the data calculation using Average appears in decimal form. The result can be changed by clicking the button Number Format. In the pop-up window that appears after clicking the Number Format button, select Percentage to show the value of the data in percentage terms. Remember to also determine the number of decimal places that you want to show. You can then click OK button and your worksheet will display the below food line field as a percentage on your worksheet. Once you've created a pivot table, you can now group your data, especially when you have lots of data that you want to summarize. In fact, pivot tables are nothing more than a flexible summary. Next, we'll be looking at poverty rates by branch, loan cycle, and loan amount. Poverty rate is defined as the percentage of clients below a poverty line. In this example, we will define poverty by the national poverty line and the $1.25 per day line. When you're working with your own PPI data, you will use one or more poverty rates that fit your organization's goals and the purpose for using the PPI. Now let's go back to the All spreadsheet. Let's create a new pivot table and drag the following fields into the values box. Number, below national poverty line, and below $1.25 per day line. 
Change the number field to count the total number of entries by using the value field settings. Change the below national poverty line field to average by percent. And let's change the below $1.25 per day line to average by percent as well. Now select the branch field and drag it into the row label section. You can now see the data summarized by the different branches and the variance between the number of accounts for each branch as well as the percentages of those below the national poverty line and the $1.25 per day line. Remove the branch field from the row labels by dragging it out and back up to the pivot table field list. Drag the loan cycle field into the row label section. You can now see the number of clients and their respective poverty levels by the amount of time into their loan cycle. Let's go back to the first pivot table worksheet you created. And let's change the values of the following fields. For number, Let's change to count. For below USAID extreme line, let's change it to average in percentage number format. For below national poverty line, let's do the same, change it to average in percentage number format. Let's change below $1.25 per day line to average in percentage number format as well. And we'll do the same for $1.75 per day. And again, the same for $2.50 per day. Now drag the loan amount from the pivot table field list to the row labels. Put the cursor on the data that you want to group. For the purposes of this guide, put the cursor on row label 102737, or A5 in this worksheet. Right-click and a pop-up will appear. Click Group. A pop-up for grouping will appear, showing the start and end values, as well as the intervals you'd like to group the data with. Let's choose to start at zero and go to five million, with grouping intervals of one million. And click OK and the pivot table now shows the grouped data. Now that you've grouped the data, you can format the data into visually appealing tables and charts to help you analyze and communicate your PPI results in ways that will deepen the organization's understanding of the data and help guide decision making. With the pivot table selected, click on Design in the main menu. A pop-up will appear. In the pop-up, format the table by putting your computer mouse over the design you like. For the purposes of this guide, let's choose Pivot Style Medium 15. Remember that when working with your own data, choose the most appropriate type of table, one that best displays the data visually. Click on Options in the main menu, and click on Pivot Chart in the Tools section. A pop-up will appear, giving you a number of chart options. There are a number of choices including column, line, pie, and bar charts. You can also show your chart in two-dimensional or three-dimensional figures. Choose whichever chart best suits your data. For the purposes of this guide, let's choose column. Remember that when working with your own data, choose the most appropriate type of chart, one that best displays the data visually. Follow the instructions in Excel in creating a chart using the wizard. Make sure that you're not crowding your table with your chart by putting it in the same worksheet. You can put charts in another worksheet and then combine them later on when you're putting a full report together that includes both text and data. To move the chart to another sheet, right-click on it and select Move Chart. For now, let's move our chart to its own sheet, which we'll call All Charts.
Drag Loan Cycle from the Pivot Table field list into the Report Filter box. You will notice that there is now a drop-down button in Column B, Row 1. Click the drop-down button to expand it. A pop-up will appear indicating the different items by which you can filter the data. If you want to filter by more than one item, select the Multiple Items checkbox at the bottom of the list. The pivot table now shows data that is both grouped by loan amount and filtered to show only the first four loan cycles. You can use either of these tools to group and filter in many different ways. The tables and charts you use to display your PPI data and include in reports should always follow the basic PPI standards of use for reporting. Whether you create the charts using the pivot tables functionality in Microsoft Excel 2007 or in another software or management information system. The complete set of basic PPI standards of use, including reporting standards, can be found on our website. While all the basic PPI standards of use for reporting must be adhered to, the most immediately salient standards for tables and charts and reports on PPI data that you tend to use with organization staff, senior management, and board of directors are 1. All reports must indicate what population the results represent. For example, incoming clients, mature clients, rural branches, all regions, all new clients in a specific year, or all mature clients as of a specific date. Two. PPI results include the number of PPIs analyzed. 3. PPI results indicate the dates when data collection occurred. And finally, 4. PPI results indicate the poverty lines used for analysis. The Progress Out of Poverty Index is a product of Grameen Foundation. For more information on the PPI, visit us at www.progressoutofpoverty.org.